everyone and welcome back to another talking head video. Today we are at the beach and I wanted to share a little bit about how much it cost me to build my humble abode. Fan builds can range from anywhere between let's say $2,000 and $100,000 plus. Like a lot of money. There really isn't a right way to go about building a van or any other sort of type of vehicle to get out on the road. Everyone's needs are different and I don't think anyone should ever feel bad or embarrassed about how little or how much they want to spend on their van build. This lifestyle is meant to be freeform and bring out your creativity and your ability to be innovative. And I truly, truly believe that every person has the capability to build out their own van. Heck, you know, I'm just, you know, just a simple old 20 year old something woman, right? Who built out a van. So if I can do it, then certainly you can do it too. That being said, this video is just about how much I spent on this particular build that I built myself. I saved as many receipts as possible and added them all up so I could give you a pretty accurate number of how much I spent. There are a lot of things in this van that I could have found for cheaper or I didn't actually need to buy in the first place. However, I think this gives a great picture of how much a newbie builder like me spends on a project like this because you were going to make a lot of mistakes like buying too much of something or buying something that was the wrong part and though you can return most things sometimes you can't and you end up spending more money than you intended that is just the nature of a project like this or just the nature of DIY in general. All right, so let's get to the numbers. Let's not play around here. The total price of this build out, including the van that we bought used, was $8,956.62 USD. This does not include a month ago I had to get my brakes changed and that cost me $340. And this doesn't include the other miscellaneous tiny little things that I've bought for the van like extra screws and stuff like that since I've gotten on the road and pretty much finished my van. So first off, the van was $2,000 used. My mom and I found this van about a year and a half ago on Craigslist. We probably could have negotiated the price down a little bit more, but at the time my mom had the $2,000 and was just like, that's how much I want to spend on the van. It was exactly the budget we had for this and I think it's a pretty good van for what we got. We had to make sure the van was in good working condition, so we spent $300 on new tires and then an additional $1,117.67 on a new radiator, uh, this weird pan thing that goes under the van, which I think has to do with alignment or something. I don't know. It, it fixed something. It was important. Some replacement tubes because some of the tubes got old. This is like a 30 plus year old van. And then of course, part of that cost was the labor that we had to pay the mechanic for fixing the van. And this was all done in California. That will definitely drive up the cost. The following items are all ones that aren't 100% necessary, but for me, they're things that I personally wanted in my van. For you, that might be different. Some people like to go fridgeless. Some people don't want a composting toilet in their van. So it really is up to you, but this just gives you an idea of what I did. I bought a 12 volt Dometic fridge on Amazon for $753.23. I bought a Nature's Head composting toilet, which cost me $940.48. And then a Max fan, which can be shown here, uh, that cost $300. Uh, my mom got that back when she owned the van. Uh, an electric water pump I paid $24.99 for. My mom and I bought a CB radio each so that we can communicate and use for emergencies, and that was $48. The sink that I have in my van was $58.99, and now that I look back on it, I think I could have probably gotten something that was lighter and something that was cheaper and bought it at a like hum Habitat Humanity Restore or something instead. But nonetheless, it's not what happened. I paid $58.99, it's so expensive. Like, why would I do that? And then the faucet, which pulls out, I had to get a very specific one because of the space limitations. That one cost me $50.49. And then I also got a soap dispenser, which I highly recommend, but is not necessary. I definitely think it comes in clutch a lot. That cost me $15.79. And then the memory foam bed that I purchased on 
Amazon that I cut up for in here cost me $145. Now these things at first look might seem really expensive, like why would I spend $1,000 on a toilet? Like that just seems ridiculous, right? But for me, spending the extra cash on something that is good quality and the company that I bought it from has great customer service is really worth it for me. Things in any moving vessel, break a lot. It doesn't matter how expensive your build is, things are going to break. So being able to have a part of an item that was really expensive replaced for free or having it the whole item be replaced for free is really important to me and worth the investment and it's just worth not having to have the hassle of changing the item out or also the environmental impact that buying a cheaper item can have on our planet. If you're gonna buy something, you should do it right the first time. I think there's always a balance between price and quality and what you can afford with your budget. And then there's electrical, which can vary greatly between build to build and who you purchased it from and how big of a setup you want. These numbers that I'm about to give you are based off of my moderately sized system. I charge my camera, my laptop, uh, my phone, run an electrical water pump, the fan, the fan on my composting toilet, my 12 volt refrigerator. So a lot of items, it, it suffices most of the time except for really, really cloudy days, which I think is a problem for most people. But if you want to see what my electrical system is in depth, I have a handy dandy electrical video. So just to reiterate, my whole electrical system, including the cables, three solar panels, charge controller, fuse box, electrical hardware like switches and dimmers, charging ports, all of my lighting, my 200 amp hour AGM battery and fuses all cost me $1,885.38. I do not regret a penny of this money. Having a robust electrical setup for me is really important and really turns my space from just a van into a a house, something that I can go anywhere and do the things that I need to do, like work and make these videos. So the next categories are more on the building hardware side. These numbers are not going to be the same for everyone for sure, but just to give you an idea of what I spent, here are the numbers. The cost of building all of these cabinets with plywood cost me $445.95. The cost of the fabric for my curtains and for my cushions was $179.85. Finally, the random things like putty, all brackets, screws, random plumbing things, um, tubes and stuff, and snacks when I was really hangry, all cost me $660.55. Now looking at all of this stuff all broken down, it doesn't seem like as much stuff as I remember it to be honest. Even though maybe to you it still seems like a lot. I just was imagining making this video and I was gonna just be laying down huge numbers here and there. But for those of you who want to do a build that's similar to mine, you can start to kind of categorize things and say, okay, this month I'm going to save up for this category of things. And then next month I'll save up this much money for this category of things. I don't know, maybe this can help you feel a little less overwhelmed by the expense of it. And then you have to remember that once you buy your van and you move in, your expenses are gonna be infinitely low than when you were paying rent plus like utilities. All of the money that was once given to your landlord is 100% yours now. Think about that. And that's why I want to say if you're looking into doing this and you don't have a lot of cash up front, I highly recommend going for a cheaper van like my van, which was only $2,000, and saving up that money as best as you can and then just moving into the van as soon as possible, even if you're just putting a mattress down and saving up money as you go. I personally think that when I started this journey over two years ago, if I had just taken the van that I bought and put a mattress in it and lived my life how I wanted to live it, I probably would have saved a lot of money just by figuring out what was important to me instead of basing it off of what other people do. I think doing it that way can help you save money the quickest in order to put in the upgrades that are important to you. And let me tell you, there have been 
many a day I've spent in a hardware store parking lot where I've just been whacking away at something or using my jigsaw being kind of loud and no one's ever said anything to me like maybe they've given me weird looks but you can definitely build your van on the road I promise you people do not care what you do as much as you think they do the reason why many of us are living this lifestyle is to get out on the road and I cannot emphasize enough that it's not about having the most tricked out van with the most expensive items it's about finding out what works for you as a single individual person and getting out there as fast as possible in order to live the life of your dreams.